Hi everyone, my name is Jablile Sendane. I am 25 years old, turning 26 in three weeks time. So um, I was born in a town called Whitbank in Bumalanga. Uh, I have a twin brother and an elder brother, a late brother and, and a younger sister. So I still have both parents. And when me and my twin brother were born, um, there was an arrangement made that uh, me and my twin brother we should go stay with my grandparents and staying with my grandparents we we had such a lovely home it was a big house we had almost everything that we wanted uh, my grandfather was a very supportive man he was very successful he bought us all the toys and all the food and my grandmother was a uh, was a very hard-working woman and the first thing that she taught us growing up was that prayer is important and that also we should work hard for the things that we want. She is 96 years old now and she is growing strong. Now looking at the bright side of things, um, I loved staying there, but I was also um, met with difficult situations um, during those years because I was the only girl child in the house and that meant I did a lot of house cures for us. So um, doing everything for my, for my cousins and for my uh, brother, it meant a lot to me. It made me feel happy and proud of myself. But the only problem was that my elder cousin in the house um, used to abuse me sexually and emotionally. And when I started realizing that something was not going well was when I started school in grade one. Um, I felt that I wasn't happy to be home because I felt that something was being taken away from me forcefully and I wasn't happy in that space. I remember when I was in grade two, I would delay going back home and so just so I cannot be in, the, in, in that environment. Um, so I would stay at school, play around, help with the cleaning, and also do some of my homeworks. I mean, it doesn't make sense for a grade two student to do afternoon classes on their own, but I was running away from something at home because whatever chance he got to um, be with me alone, he would use it to touch me inappropriately, to have sex with me forcefully, and it used to hurt me uh, a lot. And I think what was very disturbing about that situation was that he made me believe that every girl child my age uh, was going through the same thing because I remember I said to him I'm gonna tell my friends about this and he said to me you don't have to tell your friends because they're also going through the same thing and you're not supposed to tell anyone when you do that you actually are a bad child I mean who wants to be a bad child so I kept quiet I kept it to myself for many years until 2003 when my grandfather passed away and my grandmother called us after the funeral and said, you know what, you guys, you need to go stay with your parents now because I won't be able to take care of you guys alone. And I was sad that my grandfather is gone, but that for me was a ticket to get away from that toxic environment. So I left um, Guandebele and went and stayed with my, grand with my parents in Middlebeck. That was in 2004. And I remember when I got in the first day, I was so happy to be with mom and dad. And you know, there's a, there's a quote by um, Nelson Mandela in one of his autobiographies. It says, um, after one has climbed a mountain, they realize that there are more mountains to climb. Because when I moved away from my grandparents, I thought I had made it in life. I thought I was going to be free. I was going to be happy. But then I realized that I actually blamed myself for what happened to me. I didn't love myself that much. I started overeating. I didn't love my body. I was shy and I couldn't connect with people. I couldn't make friends. And that was a difficult situation for me. So I continued with my life and I was very close with my teachers at school because they always saw the best in me. I was doing very well academically. So I would always befriend my teachers all the time. And I promise you every single year of my life schooling in primary and high school, I would befriend a teacher which I would eventually open up to and they take me for counseling and they, they help me um, get better, they help me heal. 
uh, and I remember one of the teachers when I was in grade seven, he, she said to me, you know, I'm doing this for you, but you need to tell your parents. And I was scared of telling my parents because I thought it was going to divide the family, you no, know, the father and the mother's side. And I didn't want to see that happening because we were so close, such a big, happy family. And then she said to me, you need to call your mom. If you're scared of telling her, I will talk to her myself. Just come with her on Monday. So the whole weekend, I'm telling my mom, you need to go to school on Monday, you know? And then she's like, but I know you're not a naughty kid. Why do you want me to go to school? I'm like, it's important for you to go. They need to talk to you. So yeah, my mom went on Monday. They told her everything. And I remember she, they were in a boardroom at school. And one of the teachers came to call me from class and said, um, Sindana, you need to join your mom and your teacher, you know, in the, in the boardroom. So when I went there, I saw my mom through the window of that particular boardroom crying. And I, I can't get that picture out of my mind because she was crying so hard. And I could see how hurt she was hearing what I went through as her child. And I never said anything for so many years. So... When I got to the bedroom, she hugged me and she said, you know what, my child, I am sorry. I didn't know, you know, and then we went back home after school and now we had to deal with the matter as a family. You know, my dad is coming back from work. We have to tell him that this is what happened. You know, it was a, it was a tricky situation for us. My, my siblings were shocked. They didn't believe it, but it was the truth, you know. So when my dad came back from work, we told him and then he was he had a shock of his life as well. And we, 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 we tried to work on the matter. My, I continued attending counseling sessions with my, my dad, with my mom. And then now it was time to confront the guy. And he eventually he ran away for like two months. Nobody knew where he was. And then he came back. And when he came back, my dad was like, are you gonna press charges? I felt discouraged to press charges because I know he had done the same thing to uh, one of uh, my cousins in the family. And he stayed in jail for like two days and he was out. So I wasn't ready to face that. I was so discouraged and I was like, you know what? I want to deal with myself. I want to teach myself to forgive and to love myself, you know? So my dad was like, what do you want us to do? I'm like, I need to, I need to call him to come to our house because I need to talk to him. So they invited him to our house and uh, when he came over, um, I looked at him in the eye and I said to him, you know what, you have kept me in darkness for so many years. You have ruined all the good memories I had about my grandmother's house. You have, you have made me not be happy with myself and the person that I am. And I want to be free from that. I'm doing this for myself. And when I started saying all those things to him, he, he, he said, no, I'm sorry, I was young. And I said, exactly, you were young. Young people don't do that. Young people don't think about um, hurting other kids. What you did to me was wrong, you know? And then I said to him, you know what? I forgive you because I want to be free. I have a lot of dreams that I want to achieve. I am a young black woman who wants to go far in life. I cannot carry on my life Carry, like going on through life, carrying this heaviness in me. I want to be free and I want to be happy. And he looked at me and he said, you know what, it's okay. And on that day he came with his mother. Uh, his mother is my aunt, you know, it means he's, he's like, she's like a, a sister to my dad. So she said also, she's, she was asking for forgiveness. And I said to her, why are you apologizing? And she said, no, because when I found out about this thing, I called you and I didn't talk to you appropriate. I'm like, no, you insulted me. And that for me, I wasn't expecting that, especially from a woman, you know, but I forgave her also. I forgave her for not understanding where I came from. Maybe she was just protecting her child. I don't know, but I forgave my aunt. Um, I forgave my cousin. It took a lot for me. I cried about it for so many years. And I also forgave my parents because there was a part of me inside that always felt my dad was supposed to be there to protect me, you know? So I also forgave my parents for not being around and it wasn't their fault. They didn't know that such could happen to me. I mean, it's quite common with us black families to find yourself being raised by your grandparents, you know? It's quite common. And 
I don't know, I just made peace with that idea. I needed to forgive people. I needed to forgive myself too, which is the most important thing. Forgive myself for not speaking out. Forgive myself for not fighting back. Forgive myself for all the anger that I held inside of me because I was an angry child. And you know when you're an angry child, you don't play with other kids. You stay in the house, you're grumpy and all sorts of things. And I remember they, they used to say, um, Ufuzile, that you know like I take from someone else in the family no one bothered to ask why I was acting that way why I was I was not playing with other kids why I, would, I always kept I always kept myself in a bubble you know no one bothered to ask but now that I've grown up I am very proud of myself I finished my matric successfully I moved to Pretoria, did my degree, and now I'm currently doing my master's and also working as a scientist. I am very proud of the person that I've become and there's still more that I wanna do. I want to go back home, mentor young girls, teach them how to love themselves, how to love their bodies, how to appreciate themselves because no one can give that to you. You are the only person who's responsible for your life. So that, that is the notion that I want to pursue. I want to be there for them. Every single child out there who's going through abuse or every woman out there who's going through abuse, you need to speak out because when you speak out, your story, it gives you power, you know? So, but when you don't say anything, you feel like you're alone, but actually there's many of us out there. We may look good, we may look happy, we may look beautiful, but it doesn't matter where you are right now. It doesn't matter how you feel. You need to speak out. You need to come front and say, you know what? This is what I went through also, and not be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed to, sh to share your story. Don't be ashamed to talk about your pain because you also deserve to be happy in this life. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Javile Sendane. I've been through the most, but still I rise. <laughs>